Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we will be comparing the Flashforge Finder against the Flashforge Adventure 3 Lite. Well, why? Number one, the Flashforge Finder is actually one of the best 3D printers for beginners. And if you actually search it up on Google, it'll come on on top of the top three. And now we've got the Adventure 3 Lite. Why? because for some reason, Flashforge replaced that model with the Adventure 3. And now we're gonna see if it's really worth it or not, and the differences. So let's get started. But before we start, let's talk about filament, because you can't just start printing without filament. Luckily, both these 3D printers come with that out of the box. Some of them that I'd recommend are obviously ones that are made from Flashforge. Some others include Mika 3D. I've tried Mika 3D with many of Flashforges, and it's, it's one of the best that's not directly from Flashforge. These Mika 3Ds fit right into the spool size for the Flashforges and print out very well in quality. And in fact, right now in this video, we are using Mika 3D to extrude into the Flash Forge Adventure 3 Lite. For this video, we'll also be using Flash Forge filament for the Flash Forge Finder. But typically, I'd say they're basically the same filament in performance-wise and how they basically work. So now we're gonna talk about the differences and how they are similar. I've printed with the Flash Forge Finder before. The quality was an excellent, excellent, but it was quite impressive for a beginner 3D printer. And with the price, I guess you could say it might have been a bit worth it. But let's see that it's not as great and is basically no comparison to the quality of what you get on an Adventure 3. I'd say that the Adventure 3 Lite and the Adventure 3 are actually some major upgrades on how the printing and quality are. There are also some like, different extrusions. Here you have to manually put it in through the nozzle. Here there's automatic gears that extrude it automatically. So yeah, that does save some time and you don't have to work your arm out. One more thing that I did notice different is that this machine tended to get clogged a bit when I was extruding the nozzle since it was not automatic. I sometimes extruded it too hard and then it cracked inside. There's really nowhere to fix it like that and you just have to call Flashforge. So this one seems to have solved the problem almost completely. There is no damage so far that I've realized of it happening with this model. So yeah, I'd say it's a bit of an improvement. Filament is also an improvement. Now it's on the side instead of having to go in the back. And it's easier to load it into the caddy. One more thing that's actually similar is that they both have a touchscreen LCD display. So here you can touch tools. And same thing over here. You can touch tools and it'll take you to the tools. And they have the basic same functions in the touchscreen and what they can do. You can see the individual review of both of these and the link for that is in the description below. So if you haven't seen that, please go see that and we'll continue. But before we do, I'm gonna show you a video of how the quality of both of these compare to. Well, before we print, how do we print? Number one, you can use flash print. This is a 3D model designer that's actually specifically for the flash forges. Here right now, we're connected to the Flashforge Finder. You can also change the IP address to connect to any other Flashforge 3D printer that you have. So basically, how do you get a design though? That's different. You can't get that from Flashprint directly. You're gonna need to go to Google for that. But MakerBot gets you covered. Here we got Thingiverse. Go to thingiverse.com. And here we have all 3D designs that you could search for. Right now we're gonna print a boat design. So we go to search Thingiverse. And then here we can search boat. And it'll search all the STL designs for 3D prints. If you want one, just click on the object and then click download all files. 
and in the corner, once it is fully downloaded in the corner, you can then see that it's downloaded. Once that is downloaded, you can exit out of Thingiverse. And after you've exited out of Thingiverse, you can go back to Flashprint. Once you're in Flashprint, what you can do is actually go to Finder. Click on Finder, and then here we can see Downloads. And then we downloaded the bathtub boat. Files and simple boat STL. Yes, we want to put it on the platform. Right now, for some reason, it's not showing it, but there's the model. I did a visual video of how to print on Flash Print, so that's also in the link for the description. So yeah, basically you have the view, how you can view the object, you can move the object, rotate it, scale it, or cut it. Here we're just going to scale it to be a bit of a smaller size right here. So yeah, we are going to see how it looks and we're going to find a good, decent size that can work. That looks like a good size. Once you're ready, you can support it, but this model doesn't seem to need supports. So we can print it, low quality. Okay. Save. Since we already have this model, you can press replace and yes. And once it all looks good, you can press print. That's the IP address that you're gonna want and you can connect it. And right now, it's working. And now you can hear that the printer is turning on and starting its job. So now it's starting to run. Here we can see that it says the model number, which is, I mean, what it's printing is simple boat five, the extruded temperature, and how much time is left. Right now it shows 23 minutes. So with the percentage, we can abort the print by pressing this button, pause it, or ask for more options here. If you click on more options, here we can turn on the light, about the axis, and the filament used, and the printing speed. Once we're there, we can then go back to the main screen. And yes, I tried in all different directions to get a time-lapse video, but in the end, the shape of this machine wasn't the most convenient for filming time-lapse. Since it is in a sealed system, it actually might not be the best for ABS. But the Flash Forge Adventure is sealed, so it's probably better. I'll have to try that out one day, but from my perspective right now, this one doesn't do that well with ABS. So here, once in a while, you can replace these alignments here. And I did actually have one incident where this piece fell off right here. It's not going to register if it's at the edge, if it's not touching this button right here. Um, so yeah, that was a major problem. So luckily, Flashforge has pretty good support and they helped us fix this part. They told us how to fix it and overall, I think it was pretty well. Unfortunately, I can't get a time-lapse video, but you'll still get to see how it looks at the end. For this printer, I will be able to get a time-lapse video, so stay in tune for that. But we'll just be comparing the quality-wise and how long it takes. One definite advantage from this model compared to the Finder is that it actually heats up way faster since it's sealed. And the platform is also removable, flexible, and it actually heats up too. So yeah, they both have the same features such as preheating. And you can see those in the individual reviews in the link below. They both have Wi-Fi, like flash print, and you can also use Flash Cloud to see the monitor. The Flashboard Adventure 3 Lite version doesn't have the camera, but the Adventure 3 model does. So yeah, and we'll see the result of this soon, after it completes its run. Let's start the time-lapse video of how the Flash Forge Adventure 3 Lite is going to turn out. It's starting now.
So now the 3D print completed on this flashboard. Right now it says build completed here, and now we can press OK. Same thing was here, and it's finished. So there's the quality of this flashboard. We're gonna just take that piece off right there. And yeah, let's see what we realize here. Okay, first things first, what do we realize here? Now the quality of the print is okay, but here we get to see a lot of shrinking happening. And here in the back here, I'm not sure what's going on here. Looks like the quality is kind of not that well here. And in the back here, it's not that smooth either. So it did a decent job on how it's printing, especially for the price. But let's compare it to the Adventure 3 Lite. Adventure 3 Lite's over here. Keep in mind that this is in the same setting, low setting, the so quality wise. Here, right now, it's cooling down. The fan is spinning really fast. One more thing is that this cools down faster. So uh, that's also a nice touch here. Here we press down and we pull it out. So if we press down hard and then pull that out, it comes out. Just to let you know that it might be a little hot when it comes out first, so I recommend waiting a little bit until it cools down. It basically heats up by this aluminum plate here. And now this build tack that Flashboard is now offering coming with the base machine is not actually better for the quality of the print and how it works. So we can pop that off since I put glue here. Um, might be a bit harder to remove, but let's see how it looks when it comes off. And this is the final result. Looks like it actually did better than here. We're gonna put them side to side right here and see how they compare. Definitely, I'd say that this looks a bit better, even though there's a bit of stringing that can easily come off. So how I got it off is basically a simple flathead screwdriver by just prying it off the build plate. Simply, it's just an easy way and it won't damage the build plate whatsoever. And yeah, that's basically how it is. So I'd say that this is okay, but in terms of quality wise and performance, this is better and they're both on low quality mode. So yeah, it's interesting to see how well they did. So yeah, I'd say overall this is better. We also did the test cube print here. This is the Flashboard Adventure 3 Lite. And that is the finder. Here we can see that it got too hot to a point where it just turned brown. And here on the back, it wasn't that smooth of a finish either. Where here, it's nice and smooth in the back, and it's a nice finish. So yeah, the quality wise is definitely better, although you can still get a lot out of the finder. The basic conclusion here is it's complicated. It depends. Both of these are built right out of the box, and they're pretty easy to set up and use basically it's ready within 10 minutes out of the box just a simple setup and you're ready to go but if you want higher quality just a bit more price and better overall functionality and how it works definitely the flash Forge adventure 3 would be my choice but comparing to you if you'd like a beginner model and you're not that interested with other 3D printers in your first time, I'd say that the Flash Fork Finder would be an excellent option. Now, you can watch those individual links in the description, and I hope you enjoyed, so thanks for watching. Also, if you want to load, you just go to the menu here, Tools, Change Filament, Load or Unload. It's gonna ask you to do what the instructions say, and when you're done, go back, and you're done. Same thing here. You can click set settings and you can actually go back to the home page and go filament. You can load or change the filament, which means to take it out. This one's automatic loading, so it's gonna be way easier for you and it'll automatically do it itself. Just follow the instructions and when you're done, that's done also. This door opens like this and it also has a detachable nozzle. The volume is 150 by 150 by 150, but the finder is only 140 by 140 by 140. Here, with the plate, to put it back into place, you need to align it properly so that it aligns in. 
Here it can be a bit tricky to push in as it only has one wheel, but once you push it in, it's easy to figure out. And once it is, it's good. But like I said, it can be a bit tricky, but once you slide it in, it's good to go. And there, once it's slided in, it's good. Well, that's basically it. And as I said, thanks for watching. And this would be my choice, but obviously it depends. So yeah, you can check the prices down below to Amazon and Flashforce.com. You can also check for maintenance. And like I said, Mika 3D is one of the good types of filament if you don't want to go to Flashforce directly. But yeah, thanks for watching.